Thanks very much for organizing such a wonderful webinar. And I'm sure in these times when we can hardly move out, it's really a great benefit to all the postgraduates. So, um, so basically, I will be concentrating. We all know how to take history, but we'll I'll be concentrating on those aspects uh, which we need to keep in mind while taking history, especially in spine patient. So, like any other clinical case, first of all, we need to ask about the chief complaint. And in case of a spine, it could be either of a nature of pain. Mostly people, people complained of pain or they could have some kind of a neurological deficit or they might complain of weakness. So we need to ask, first of all, what is their chief complaint? And once that is done, we need to ask about the onset. For example, in a case of fracture, we need to ask, okay, how did the pain start? What their clear cut history of trauma? Then we need to ask about the duration, especially you know, when we are suspecting infection or even you know, for a mechanical backache, we need to ask- Dr. Kamran, can you put on slideshow, please? Is it not on slides? So no, no, it is not. It is not. Yeah, now it is. But it's not coming on my screen now. Why is that? Just I one can't. second. Just one second, please. Let me put it on. Um... Okay. Let me see view slideshow. Um... It will be at the bottom. Yeah, I know. But you can see the slides. Yeah. It's now there. <clears throat> we can see the slides. Yeah, okay. it's okay now. Now it's, yeah, okay. it's, okay. it's, it's okay. 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 So uh, then we need to ask whether, uh, you know, the course of those complaints, whether it's improving over time or it's worsening over time. That's important because if it is improving, then we can be a bit assured. But if it's worsening, then we need to investigate the patient further. And we need to ask about aggravating and relieving factors. Very important. For example, a case of disc prolapse. We need to ask whether, you know, it gets accentuated with cuffing or lifting weight or it you know it gets relieved with lying down so we need to ask about these we need to keep this in mind that we need to ask about aggravating and relieving factors as well as the character and distribution uh, whether it's a neurological you know a neurological would follow the distribution of a nerve root and non-specific pains patients might complain of pain all over and the degree of disability also the perceived disability by the patient whether they feel they can go to work whether they are so, it's so painful that they can't even do daily routine work where they're bound to bed. So we need to keep all these things in mind. And then we have to concentrate, especially with related to backache, you know, we need to keep the social, psychosocial history in mind. Many of this patient might have symptoms of depression and that can accentuate that back pain. So we need to filter them out, especially if we are planning to take them up for surgery. Uh, psycho uh, social analysis is very, very important because in patients who have a significant amount of psychosocial problem, if you do surgery, the outcome is not going to be that good. And then we need to, you know, uh, pick up the patients who might be, you know, aiming for a work-related compensation that they might, uh, they might say that I have backache because of the occupation they have, you know, lifting weight, or maybe even in medical profession, you know, patients who transfer the, you know, the patients onto the uh, operating table they might complain of backache and then they can you know claim compensation so we need to filter out all these things very intelligently and subtly uh, when we are taking the history patient age also is very important when we are taking history for example in young group uh, most of the problems will be related to growth and development for example shaman's disease or stomach spondylolisthesis or scoliosis these are all uh, these are all problems of the young age when they are growing and development. And in young adults, uh, disc herniation is very common. So we need to keep in mind, you know, the age of the patient when taking history. And in elderly, we will have problems like a degenerative scoliosis or degenerative stenosis or degenerative lysis. So these, these have their symptoms of their own. So we need to keep the patient age in mind when we are eliciting the history. And especially in the elderly, we have to be very careful of metastasis because that's one of the common uh, you know, uh, tumors in the spine, especially in the elderly patient. Multiple myeloma again is very common and they can also have fractures due to osteoporosis. So age also has a very important bearing and we need to keep in mind. Especially when we are evaluating the pain in the back and the neck, uh, we have to try to, you know, from just from the history, we have to try to narrow down what is the anatomic structure involved. Then we have to filter out whether disease processes in the spine, is it local or is it systemic? Or is it a non-related spine related problem? For example, something, you know, visceral problem like a retroperitoneal fibrosis or some tumor in the uh, in the abdomen, which can be compressing 
the nerve root and causing uh, you know some kind of a radiated pain so we need to filter these out and again so psychosocial factors are important but is it a non organic sort of a pain is a somatization of pain so we have to keep all these things in mind an important concept that uh, does you know pain in the spine can only be caused by structures when i innervated so the structures we have innervation in the spine are basically muscles tendons ligaments and fascia bone periosteum you know the periosteum surrounding the bone especially when there are abscess or intertubercles when it gets stretched it can cause pain facet joints can cause pain they have the innervation from sinus vertebral nerves disc although the uh, nucleus pulposus does not have uh, a nerve uh, you know innervation but the annulus has innervation it can cause pain then dura nerve root and obviously dorsal dew all these uh, you know these are the structures which can cause pain so we should try to you know when eliciting histories try to narrow down where the patient is coming from uh facet joints by themselves can cause pain especially you know if the patient comes with extension and rotation or you know you can think that maybe if the patient has a mechanical back back pain due to osteitis of the facet joint or you know the the, the kind of pain which facet joints cause is by and large local and axial it's not by sometimes very very rarely it's radiating the neurologic pain caused by nerve root involvement is more or less dermatomolar in pattern so if you have a patient who complains of pain in a particular uh, distribution of nerve or in, or other or to say that it's a dermatomal pattern then it's more likely to be a neurologic pain rather than you know localized to some other structure uh, we should try to localize which nerve is it it can be you know the pain uh, due to nerve root compression could be either a paresthesia they can complain of burning or tingling sensation they can also you know complain of hyperalgesia or some kind of ache or analgesia or sometimes the patient would just say that i have pain in the distribution of a nerve uh, a fundamental concept is that we should you know when uh, eliciting when eliciting pain in the you know history of pain we have to try to uh, decipher whether it is a axial pain or a radicular pain this is absolutely fundamental so uh, axial pain is something which is predominantly localized to the spine and associated with soft tissue so it's basically central and it will only be localized to spine or at the most to the muscles paraspinal muscles there are absolutely no radiation and axial pain in spine can arise either from muscular tendons or ligament structures it can also arise from facet joints or vertebral bodies and also from annulus of the disc okay Uh, on the other hand a radicular pain or radiculopathy arises basically due to compression or ischemia or some kind of pathology in the axonal condition of a nerve root so that's a kind of pain radicular pain is something which is arising because of some problem with the nerve roots so radicular pain would radiate into a limb along the nerve roots uh, it could be due to neural compression most commonly because of disc or some kind of stenosis osteophytes impinging on the nerve root or it could also be due to intrinsic pathology in the spinal cord or nerve root, like a nerve root tumor or some kind of pathology in the spinal cord and myelopathy we should know the term and it's because basically basically because of compression of the spinal cord uh, a classic example of a radiculopathy because of a disc would be a lower extremity patient would complain of a lower extremity pain which starts in the back or the gluten region and typically radiates into the lower leg along the distribution of nerve root into the calf or the foot back pain may or may not be there patient may complain of a shooting or burning pain but it would typically be in a dermatomal pattern along l5 l4 whichever nerve root you know but it should follow the distribution of a nerve root patient may complain of paresthesia like tingling pins needles numbness or sometimes they may complain of muscles now when taking history the most important things that we should not especially in a spine patient is that we should not miss the imminent danger or red flags which are infection tumor fracture okay. cord equina syndrome and progressive neurological deficit we cannot miss it so whenever we are taking a history of our spine patient we all we should rule out these in the history itself so when taking a low back ache history or a back ache history we will of a new onset pain in patient more than 50 years may you know the herald a uh, tumor or malignancy and in less than 20 years because in uh, in less than 20 years the the incidence of mechanical back pain because of degeneration or degenerative disease is very very less so we should be aware pain especially worse at night because most of the mechanical back pain you know it is more with activity and it 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 reduces at night 
So be careful if patient complains of pain, which is worse at night, either it could be infection or a tumor, but we need to investigate further. Uh, pain worse in supine position. Most of the mechanical back pain would reduce uh, on lying down. Uh, always ask about bladder bowelers because that uh, definitely indicates that there's some kind of a major neurologic compromise. I'll again, ask about saddle anesthesia, any recent weight loss. Uh, again, it points towards either a malignancy or infection. Ask about uh, fever and constitutional symptoms and definitely ask about malignancy or any kind of immunosuppression. So when we are uh, you know, eliciting history for cancer, um, we need to ask about age. Definitely be suspicious if the patient is more than 50 years. Um, I think I'm, I'll just quickly rush through. Uh, history, I always ask about malignancy, any unexplained weight loss, and history of smoking. Uh, again, uh, pain not relieved by rest is typical of cancer, night pain, if the pain duration is more than one month, because most of mechanical back pain or even disc pain, that will subside by one month, and they respond to conservative treatment. So failure of conservative treatment, you should think about these things. In case of infection, ask about active or recent infection and history of fever, especially in a country where TB is so endemic. We have to ask about weight loss, appetite loss, night cries, constitutional symptoms, and malaise. Any history, family history of TB, very important. And again, ask about diabetes, drug abuse, and immunosuppression. Uh, in case of fracture, it's rather obvious, but do ask about significant trauma. However, in patients who are more than 60 years, there's uh, osteoporosis. So... Uh, you know, minor trauma can also cause osteoporotic fractures. So keep that in mind, especially if they're on steroid intake, they, anything causing osteopenia or osteoporosis or in patients with, you know, diffuse uh, skeletal hyperostosis or expand, these have osteoporosis, background osteoporosis. So, you know, you should ask about these things, especially if you're suspect, suspecting, you know, pathological fractures or uh, fragility fractures. In case of quadri equine syndrome, you should you know also always suspect a patient who comes with a new onset of pain and ask about bladder bowel symptoms, any sexual dysfunction, sad anesthesia, any significant lower leg pain or weakness, and especially if it is bilateral, you should rule out a quadri equine syndrome. In case of myelopathy, ask about paresthesia, especially because uh, fine motor control of the hand and hand is very frequently involved in case of CSM. Uh, ask about instability, gait, you know, in the gait and balance and also about bladder bowel problems. So, and then finally coming to past medical history, always ask about diabetes because that can confound your neurological finding. Patient may have a diabetic neuropathy and you might think that it is due to a neural compression. Ask about comorbidities because if you're going to take up the patient, we need to be aware of uh, hypertension, CAD. Uh, ask about osteoporosis, angst, pond, and dish because these can also impact, uh, you know, the surgical outcome. and especially about vascular claudication because it has, uh, you know, it will uh, it'll confuse you with spinal stenosis, which is so common in old age groups. So you should be able to, uh, you know, rule out vascular claudication from neurological claudication and ask about history of TB because that's so common in our country. And, uh, and the, again, in the family history, you have to ask about inflammatory conditions like HLAB27 positivity because of angst point and you know, keep these things in mind that they have a, a familial history. So we should be keeping that in mind to rule out uh, some kind of inflammatory disease. Uh, neuromuscular disease also have a hereditary and genetic patients to ask about that, as well as a family history of TB. So I think from history point of view, these are the things that we need to keep in mind. And uh, especially in the case of spine. I think that's uh, by and large, we have covered most of the things, but I would like to reiterate that definitely rule out the, the uh, red flags, which I said, infection, tumor, um, and bladder bowel syndrome, cordic syndrome, fracture. These are things we have to rule out in history. Thanks very much. Open to questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Kamran. And uh, his presentation is open to questions now.